Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMamoka.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to teach students multi digit multiplication when we have a two digit multiplier. Now, this assumes that the student already knows how to multiply, for example, 5 times 78 or 3 times 217. In other words, when we have a one digit multiplier. And I like to teach this in three different steps. The first step is to learn to multiply two and three digit numbers by whole tens and hundreds. Next, we will study multiplying in parts. And lastly, we come to the standard algorithm, which is, for example, like this 23 times 89. Or it could be a three digit number on top, for example, 717 times 45. Let's look at the first part. We have here, for example, 57 times 4, which the students have already learned how to do, so they know 4 times 7 is 28, and carry. 5 times 4 is 20, and add the carry number, like that. And now we're going to talk about what if it was 57 times 40. Now, that, of course, is just a tenfold difference. It is simply, if we had 40 here, we would tag a zero here because it would be 10 times as much. And we need to let students get used to the idea of multiplying this way. What they do is they can think about multiplying 4 times 7 and then 4 times 5, just like here. But to start with, we'll put the 0 here. Just like the 0 came here at the end of the number, the 0 will be in the end of the number, so we're going to put it right there before we start. And then we go 4 times 7 and then 4 times 5, and add the carry number, like that. This, of course, remembering to put the 0 here, is going to be important in this algorithm, as you know. Similarly, if we have a 3-digit number, they already know how to multiply that, so 6 times 8 is 48. 2 times 6 is 12, plus the carry number 16, and then 1 times 6 plus 1. And we can ask the students, what would it be if we had 128 times 60? And they should be able to understand and then we just tag a zero here. Or if it, what, what would it be if it was 128 times 600? Then we would, if this was times 600, we would tag two zeros here, right? And so if it is written this way, students can start out by putting the two zeros that go to the end of the number and then go six times eight. 48, 6 times 2, plus that, and 6 times 1, plus that. And after they know this well, we are ready for the next step. Next, we will again study multiplying in parts. And we have here 32 times 47, and that is two two-digit numbers. And so one of them is then broken down to two parts. It doesn't matter which one. I took 47, and it's 40 plus 7. And now we will multiply in two parts. We will multiply 32 times 40 and 32 times 7 over here. And the student has been practicing this kind of multiplications, so they remember to put 0 here first of all. And then go 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. And this one, of course, is also familiar. 7 times 2 is 14, 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1. And the last step will be to add these two results like this and we have we have our answer now. Now similarly if we have a three digit number times a two digit number then you have to break down the two digit number to two parts 30 and 4 here. And then again we have two multiplications to do separately. 517 times 30 here and 517 times 4 here. And here again, the 0 here, so we just put the 0 here, and then multiply 3 times 7, 21. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5, and 3 times 15. And then 4 times 7, 28, 6, and then 20. And lastly, those two parts need to be added. Two 
Okay. Of course, you want the student to practice these kind of things before going on to the last step, which is the standard algorithm. And here, since I have this here still written, I'm going to compare and take the same problem, 32 times 47. And now, in the standard algorithm, all we have is we have these two parts and the addition together in this one compact algorithm. We first go 7 times 32, which we already did here. So it is 224. And then in the second part, students are told to put 0 here before they start. It's because it's a multiplication by 40. And then go this part, 40 times 32. And lastly, the addition happens right here. But it is essentially the same as these three parts here. And it should be now easy for students to see. And similarly here, I'm going to take the same problem In the standard algorithm, we go first four times 517, which is here already done. And then we go 30 times 517, and students are told to put a zero here, and then go three times that. We have here our result already. And lastly, add. So teaching it this way in parts should help it make sense to students.